Linkin Park is one of the most successful bands of the 2000s. Let's check out Rob Burden's drum sound. Art of Drumming is not just a YouTube channel, but also a free platform where you can find numerous drum-related courses filmed by major international artists. Head on over and join our growing community. Right with their first studio album, Hybrid Theory, released in October of 2000, the American rock band Linkin Park gained huge international recognition. Even before the band was founded under the name Zero, the name change and the introduction of Chester Bennington as the lead singer for the band in 1999 marked the real start of what we know as Linkin Park today. Up until the tragic death of Chester Bennington in 2017, the band released seven studio albums, won two Grammys, among numerous other awards, and sold over 100 million units. What makes Linkin Park's music stand out is the unique combination of rock, hip-hop and electronic elements. Drummer Rob Burden, for example, creates a perfect metamorphosis of acoustic and electronic drum sounds that works perfect as the foundation for their arrangements. Pay attention to what he does in one of their most famous songs, Numb. This song is a perfect example of how an electronic drum beat and acoustic drums can work together. The texture added by the electronic loop that plays throughout most of the song makes the drums sound a lot more interesting and unique, even though the drum groove itself is pretty standard. That implementation of different sound colors and the feeling of two interlocking rhythms is a huge part of the song's arrangement. Now let's get to our recreation of this hybrid drum sound. We started with the acoustic drums and went for our Gretsch Renown kit, since Burden is well known to be a Gretsch artist. You might recognize this exact kit from a few of our recreation videos like Green Day, In the Air Tonight, Rage Against the Machine or The Rolling Stones. And once again, the kit just worked great. With 10 and 12 inch rack toms, 16 and 18 inch floor toms, one on each side and the 22 inch kick drum, we get pretty close to what Burden uses himself. The missing drum is a 14 by 6 and a half PDP concept maple snare. The drum heads are clear emperors for the toms, a clear power stroke 3 for the bass drum and a coded emperor X for the snare. The clear heads on the toms and bass drum help to achieve the right attack for his sound. To get the durability you need for rock drumming, double ply tom heads, an impact patch on the batter head of the bass drum and the reverse dot of the snare drum head serve you well. Let's check out the tuning of the drums and what they sound like in the end. The bass drum batter head is tuned pretty low and the porthole in the rezzo head is essential to achieve burden sound. Additionally, we placed some muffling inside the kick drum to shorten the sustain. With a dynamic D70 placed right at the porthole, here is our Linkin Park bass drum. The toms are also tuned pretty low. and some Remo crown gels helped to add the right amount of muffling. One per tom was enough in this case. To capture the sound of the toms, we went with TGI-51s. Here's what we ended up with. The wood hoops of the snare do not really fit Burden's sound, so we decided to replace them with regular steel ones for a clearer attack. Even though the Emperor X's double ply construction with a reverse dot already present you with a pretty controlled sound, we still added a single crown gel for an even shorter snare sound. The tuning of the snare is in a medium range and we use two M201s, one as top and one as bottom mic to record it. To complete the acoustic setup, we still need some cymbals. Burden often uses A-custom projection crashes in his live setups. 
Since we don't have any of those, we went with regular A custom crashes in 18 and 20 inches. The 14 inch A new beat hi-hat is also his go-to model and so is the 10 inch A custom splash we placed above the rack toms. With a 21 inch A sweet ride and an 18 inch K custom special dry china, our setup is complete. For the overheads, we placed two large diaphragm M90 Pro X's and a small diaphragm condenser MC950 supports the hi-hat in the mix. For the room, we placed an additional M201 and now we're ready to deal with the electronics. If you look at Burden's live setups, you'll notice the huge amount of electronics implemented in his kit. To get close to the optics of his drum set and to be able to play the electronic parts as well, four of the tom pads and the module of our Geva G9 came in as a nice addition to the acoustic drums. The G9 gives you a lot of internal sound tweaking options and we decided to challenge ourselves to get as close as possible with the only stock options of the G9 and the internal processing. Changing the pitch of the sounds, layering second sounds on top, bringing in some reverb, EQ and compression, and then matching the volume of the individual sounds led to a pretty wide range of options. Here's a little example of the original stock sounds and what we came up with after some internal processing. Pascal later decided to do some more treatment in post-production and if you're interested in this, make sure to check out the complete mixing breakdown video available for free at artofdrumming.com. Since in the original, the electronic beat is playing throughout the whole song, Pascal also looped the intro section to add the characteristic texture even when he's playing the acoustic drum parts. With the electronics in place, the kit looks huge and has a very unique touch to it. Now let's give Pascal some big on-ear headphones like Burden uses and hear his version of NUM. Lincoln Park and especially Rob Burden's drumming are great examples for combining rock music and electronic elements. Coming up with a hybrid setup like he did opens up so many possibilities for a groove design and just helps a lot to implement new sounds to your playing. The inspiration you can draw from what Lincoln Park does in their arrangements and how Rob Burden plays their music is immense. Have you experimented with hybrid setups yourself? And how did you like our version of Lincoln Park's drum sound? Let us know in the comments and subscribe to our channel if you don't want to miss new recreation episodes in the future. 